going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to a modern nation. So I've never done like a Q and A episode before. So I thought maybe I'd answer a couple of questions that have come up on my channel and on Facebook and just take the opportunity to sound off on some of your questions and kind of respond back to you. Also, let me know if you want the Q and A section to be a permanent thing. I'm gonna switch arms here because my arm's getting tired. Let me know if you want the Q&A thing to be permanent and uh, I'll make that a regular thing on my channel. All right, so now it's time for a new portion that I'm trying out called Q&A or what I'd like to refer to as the mail sack. Okay, that was really low, all right? Low hanging fruit on that joke, I apologize. So in this portion of the video, I'm gonna go back and answer some questions that some of you have asked on my YouTube channel. The first question comes from Gabriel Mar Marquez. I think it's Marquez. Uh, and he asked, what Thermo Grizzly paste have you used between the dye and the IHS? That was Thermo Grizzly Conductor Knot. So the answer is yeah, I used a Thermo Grizzly Conductor Knot. You can also use Collaboratory Liquid Ultra. I recommend using a metal thermal paste if you're gonna be doing air or water cooling because it's gonna provide the maximum benefit. Uh, the, what I mean by benefit is the maximum heat transfer between the dye and the integrated heat spreader. Or if you decide to go without the IHS between the dye and your heat sink. There was one part that I forgot to film and that was putting the processor back into the motherboard and attaching the heat sink. And the reason why I forgot to film that is because there's actually more to the video than I released. I actually decided that I was gonna try to do it uh, without the integrated heat spreader. So just go bare dye on it. So the reason why I decided not to do the bare dye method was simply because um, the cooler that I have, the Corsair H100i, the screws that they provided me were not short enough in order for the heat sink to reach the processor and I didn't feel like cutting the screws down just in case things didn't work out the way that I wanted to. And so I decided to leave the integrated heat spreader on and simply put the whole thing back together. I didn't film that part. So maybe in a future episode, I will release some of the behind the scenes footage, some of the stuff that you may not have seen in the final videos that uh, you know just didn't make the cutting room floor. I might be doing a best of for year one, so make sure you check that out in December. Okay, next question. So this is a question that's been asked in general, and it's, I have X processor with X motherboard, is delitting the processor worth it? Now, remember, the only processors that you can delid right now are the Sky Lake, the KB Lake, and the Devil's Canyon, and the Ivy Bridge. There are some new KB Lake and Sky Lake processors from Intel that I believe are thermal paste and they're not solder. The reality is, yes, you can delid any processor. Now the method by which you do it will depend on which processor you have. The ones that I mentioned before, you're gonna be able to delid those uh, simply by using the razor blade or by using whichever delid tool is available. Now the ones where the heat spreader is soldered onto the die, for those ones you're gonna need a heat gun of some sort and it's really difficult. Um, you can check out, there is an overclocker by the name of Der Bauer. He does a lot of videos where he delids the soldered processors. You're not gonna see much added benefit from delitting a soldered processor as you would one that uses the thermal paste. So the question is, is delating the processor worth it? And that's gonna depend on whether you are overclocking or not. If you're not overclocking, or if you don't have a k skew processor, I'd say it's probably not worth it. As Linus Tech Tips can tell you, if you're not overclocking the processor, you're not gonna see any benefit from delitting. Now, if you are going for an overclock, you might see a moderate improvement. If you are going for an extreme overclock, like pushing the processor as far as it will go, Delating will definitely be worth it because the farther that you push the processor, the better the benefits you're going to achieve by delitting. Another question I get asked a lot is do I delid with a razor blade or do I use the delitting tool? And my answer is it depends on how much money you have and it depends on how confident you are in your ability to delid. Uh, for most beginning delitters, I would recommend uh, going with the delitting tool. It's gonna be a lot quicker 
Uh, I think it's a lot more safe, as in you're less likely to damage the processor. I think that delitting with a razor blade is great because it it really teaches you patience and it's very cost efficient. It's like 10 cents. I think delitting tools are like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's something like tw around 20 US dollars. So if you're only delitting once, I don't think a delitting tool is worth it. For me, I would recommend a razor blade if you're confident in your abilities. But for, for most anyone, if you are scared about delitting your processor, yes, of course, I would recommend you go with the delitting tool. Another common question that I get is about the LCD side panel mod. I get a question a lot asking, does X monitor work with X case? And the only thing I can tell you is you're gonna have to do that work yourself. You're gonna have to figure out how big is your case window. You're gonna figure out what the dimensions are of your display. And you know, you're gonna have to get your measuring tape out. Uh, get your calculator, do some math. Now the thing to remember for picking a display for the side panel mod is you want a display that is gonna be lower resolution. So most people think that putting in an HD monitor into their display is gonna make it look better. And the truth is, and this is according to iBuyPower who did the original Snowblind mod, it actually works better when you have larger pixels. And the reason why is because larger pixels produce more light. The smaller pixels simply can't produce enough light to be able to contrast with the white background. Sorry, nose itches. 1280 by 1024 should work just fine. You don't need a high definition monitor. I'm not saying that a high definition monitor won't work. What I'm saying is a monitor with a DVI connection will likely work better. So a question I got asked about my production. I did a video where I went over my gear. Ooh, that sounded dirty. I produced a video where I did an overview of the gear that I use to record these videos. And one of the questions that I get asked is, what software are you using to put these videos together? I do all of my video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I do all of my photos in Adobe Photoshop. I do audio editing in Adobe Audition and my YouTube introduction with the spinning cube and a modern nation on the screen, that's all done with Adobe After Effects, uh, which is a great program. I just wish I knew how to use it better. Another question I just got asked recently is what are my thoughts on the 1070 Ti? I think I echo a lot of the same sentiment as other tech tubers when I say I don't think the 1070 Ti was necessary. You've got the 1070, you have the 1080. I think Nvidia was looking at that sweet spot price point. Um, they were simply uh, butt hurt by the fact that uh, AMD beat them with the Vega uh, 56. NVIDIA didn't really need to release another SKU. NVIDIA could have done just fine with the 1070 and the 1080, but I think they're trying to hit AMD where they've made the most progress, which is in price point. AMD has always been a much more affordable solution than NVIDIA, even though NVIDIA is able to produce excellent cards that are more power efficient and more geared towards gaming. Uh, Avini asked, I always wondered why it's so dangerous to go that high with voltage. Is it because of the temps or something else? And how hard is it to de decrease the lifespan? That's actually a really good question. So processors, like a lot of other electronics, are not 100% efficient. Some of that electricity is given off in the form of heat. And heat, as we know, can damage electronics. That's why we delid the processors in the first place. So the reason why you can't pump that much voltage into a processor, one, is because of heat, and two, because even if you are able to overcome the heat barrier, you're still gonna be limited by the electronics on the board. The heat is going to stop your processor uh, from being able to overclock in a stable manner. Now, if you're able to get the processor cold enough, you're still gonna be limited by the electricity. Eventually, the electricity will kill the electronics, regardless of what the temperature is. You can't simply pump that much voltage through something and expect it to always work. If you've got a processor or um, a GPU, for example, that you are pumping more voltage into than the VRM, your voltage regulator can handle, your card is gonna die. The other reason is because too much electricity 
is going to cause uh, silicon degradation. All right, so that's all the time I have for questions today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button below and share the video. And join the modern nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below. And when you do, click on the bell icon inside of that subscribe button to be notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. Now remember, I'm releasing new YouTube videos every week and I am trying my hardest to get one of these mod videos out, whether it's gonna be the Snowblind mod version two or it's gonna be that Xbox One controller mod. Um, I don't know which one I'm gonna be able to finish first, but I gotta say I have a lot of work to do. If you have any other comments or questions, you can leave them for me in the comment section below. Remember, I'm gonna be doing more Q&A episodes in the future, so make sure you leave me those questions. And as always, you can reach me on social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you don't wanna contact me through YouTube, make sure you hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. Um, or just say hi on Instagram, comment on my photos. That's cool too. Um, you could also catch me streaming every Friday and Saturday evening on Twitch and YouTube. My schedule is posted to the right, so make sure you check that out. But there will be more modding videos in the future. No doubt about that. I can guarantee you that. But until then, I will see you guys next time, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.